All right, so it's nearly 2025, and you'd think by now there'd be a really simple and hassle-free way to move large video files from your iPhone to your Mac. Well, the good news is there is, and I'm gonna show you two of these methods in today's video. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Ty, and on this channel, we do all things YouTube studio monetization and channel growth from a brand new creator's perspective. So if you're just finding me, welcome, and I hope you stick around. Let's jump in. Method number one is airdrop. So you're probably familiar with airdrop already. Chances are you've tried to send a picture or a video or some other file from your iPhone to maybe another iPhone or a Mac. It actually works really well wirelessly. The downside though, is if you're a YouTuber and you're creating videos on your iPhone, just like I am, chances are your file sizes get pretty large on those movie files. And when you try to airdrop that to your MacBook, at least in my experience, because I'm kind of dumb and I haven't figured out how to make my um, screen timeout, not timeout, it will end up canceling the airdrop midway through. And oftentimes I'll have to restart it. it. Just wastes a lot of time at the end of the day. So obviously there are better ways to do this. I'm gonna show you how to use airdrop in a way where you won't have to worry about your phone timing out. So for those of you who are on Mac OS 15 and iOS on your iPhone 18, there's a new feature called iPhone mirroring. I don't know if you've played with this yet, but it's actually really cool and you should totally check it out. All right, so let's take a look at iPhone mirroring. If you don't have it already down here in your toolbar, you can go in your applications and find it, or you can do a spotlight search by hitting command space and just type in iPhone and you'll see iPhone mirroring will pop up. So we can click on that. And what it'll look to do is connect to your iPhone. Now you have to have your iPhone inactive. It can't, you can't like be playing with it or looking at it. The screen can't be on. So make sure you're not messing around with it and it will sync to your iPhone. And what's great about this is you can actually interact with it using your trackpad. You can do all the things you normally do on your device. And one of those things is airdrop. So if we come into our photos and we act as though we are going to do an airdrop of a video file, and let's just pick this one right here. This is a 24 minute video. And let me just show you how big this thing is. It is 8.7 gigs worth of data. It is a 4K video at 60 frames per second. So it's a fairly large file. And if I were to airdrop this just normally, chances are it would time out and it would take forever and we'd have to restart it. So what we can do, we can simply do the airdrop functionality from our virtual iPhone. And you'll notice right here, I have my MacBook is showing up. But if you don't see your device, you can come in here and click airdrop. Make sure that you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connected to both devices and turned on. And then you can simply grab that and it's going to initiate the airdrop. Now, if you're on the latest version of Mac OS, you will now see a progress bar here on the top. Whereas previously, I think you saw like a circle around the, um, like the image of the person who was sending it. So as you can see, this is almost a nine gig file and it's humming right along. This will only take a few minutes to transfer, and then this device will live on our Mac, and we can then throw it into our video editor or do whatever we need to do with it. Okay, and there we have it. It has completed the airdrop. That took, what, about six, seven minutes at most, and now we have that folder. Uh, we have this file in our folder. We can now access that. Method number two is image capture. You may or may not have heard of it. It is a native application on your Mac, and it's a really simple way to get your pictures and videos off of your iPhone onto your Mac via a USB connection. Let me show you what that looks like right now. All right, once you plug in your device via USB, I'm using USB-C on my iPhone to USB-C into my MacBook. It's going to automatically pull up the Photos application, but we're not actually going to use the Photos application, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And then I'm going to do another spotlight search, so Command Space, and I'm going to type in Image, and you'll see Image Capture is one of the options. So we'll hit Return on that. And now what we have is a dedicated application that's primary job is to move files like pictures and videos from your smartphone onto your Mac. You can see all of the files are showing up. Let's grab these two right here. These are video clips from the other day. This is that same 8.7 gig file that we moved over AirDrop. And then here's a smaller two gig file. What's great about this is you can pick both of them and then you can just click and drag onto your desktop. And now you can see it's importing both of those movie files. And because it's over USB, it will be pretty quick. 
Now, the only downside of this is that you need to have a USB cable with you when you want to do your transfer, whereas AirDrop, it's all wireless, so you don't need to worry about extra equipment. But all in, I think this is a much quicker process to do it via USB than over AirDrop. And just like that, it did it in a fraction of the time. Super quick, super easy. You don't have to worry about fussing with a thumb drive to connect to your iPhone and then to reinsert that into your MacBook. It's all done via USB through image capture. All right, now that you've gotten all of your videos off of your mobile device onto your Mac, the next step is to edit. And if you haven't done much editing yet, you may be a little concerned on where to start. The good news is I have a tutorial for beginners on how to master some of the very basics of video editing in a program called CapCut. So be sure to check out the video right over here to get started on that.